Good morning, Mount Pisgah. Are you there? <laughs> You're there. Good. I see you. You're looking really, really good this morning. We're, we are we are glad to be here and be able to uh, provide a little bit of music. And Peggy's here too. She was she was saying I'm here too. Peggy said she wanted to make sure I knew she was here. Okay, guys, we're going to start out this morning with a, a call to worship. If y'all would sing and stand up with us. It's easy song. Come now, it's time to worship. Okay? Y'all stand. Last Sunday, we had the opportunity to celebrate homecoming together, and I want to thank all of our hospitality committee and uh, kitchen workers um, that got everything out and ready to go, and um, thankfully worked diligently to keep everything hot while um, Pastor Todd and I were a little bit long-winded last Sunday. So, um, but we had a wonderful time of fellowship afterwards, and I have a special personal thank you to all the people that made the veggies for me. I had a very full uh, selection of vegetables to uh, choose from, and I was very, very excited about that. Um, so, uh, yesterday, we had our fall festival here at the church. It was a wonderful day for a festival. It was a glorious
this time of fellowship. And I have a note to read from our fall festival coordinator. And I'm going to take a page um, from a Harry Potter book and say to you, this comes from she who does not want to be named. So those of you who are familiar with Harry Potter will understand. <laughs> It says, generous donations, cheerful, hardworking, enthusiastic volunteers made to order weather. Everything fell into place for our fall festival yesterday. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. Although the crowd was smaller than expected, and not quite everything we tried turned out the way we wanted, the atmosphere was festive. And if anyone didn't have a good time, it was their own fault. We had lots of first time volunteers and some new ideas. However, for Mount Pisgah regulars, the highlight of the day was seeing Miss Jean Johnson and Ted Beverly working away in the kitchen. God's healing power is amazing. Um, God blessed us yesterday in so many ways. Let's not forget that when things fall into place, there's usually a behind the scenes third party involved. God is good and he knew what we needed. Let's give him the credit and the praise for a wonderful day. So thank all of you who came and participated. It was a spectacular day, a very blessed day. And can we have a round of applause for God and for everyone involved? <laughs> this morning as we come into worship, we have an action-packed week to look forward to as well with lots of great opportunities to worship and fellowship together. So it looks like uh, from our bulletin, you can take a look at back. You have a uh, little bit of a reprieve until um, next uh, Sunday. And then next Sunday, the lunch bunch will be going to Hudson Bay after worship. And I've been asked to highlight, this is not just for senior adults. The lunch bunch, everyone is invited that just wants to come and have lunch together after church. Our young families and everybody my understanding is last week at, or two weeks ago at Paradise Acre, they had close to 30 folks from church that just came out and had a great time. So mark your calendars for that next week. Next week, the youth, 5th through 12th grade, are going to get to go um, for putt-putt and pizza. And the only important thing to note about that is parents are going to need to transport their youth to and from the putt-putt place because we have um, some transportation um, glitches. So uh, it is in Hope Mills at the Hope Mills putt-putt. So we hope you guys can uh, join us for, for that. I also want to highlight many of you last week had an opportunity to hear about the Agape Pregnancy Center from uh, Ms. Helen, the director there. And we are still uh, collecting offerings um, to support ultrasounds. $60 allows them to provide an expectant mother who is struggling through what to do with her pregnancy with an ultrasound and the opportunity to, uh, to see that child. And in 100% of the cases in which they have done that and been able to do that, the mother has chosen to carry the child to term. So if you would like to support that ministry or know some more about that, you can um, talk with Janice or any one of the other Women on Mission um, folks and just earmark your offering towards that with Women on Mission Mission Project. That would be great. So. Christian Center is also in some need of um, some donations, some food donations. If you would like to uh, be part of that, you can either drop them off at the Christian Center. If you'd like to volunteer or know more about that ministry, you can see Ms. Shelby, Shelby Wade, or Mr. Ted in the far back. Um, they are our faithful volunteers there, and they can tell you some more about that. So lots of places to worship and to serve and glorify God. But we are thankful for those of you at home and those of you here today who have come to worship together. Let's join in prayer. Holy Spirit, 
This is our time to worship together as a faith family. This is our time to praise God for all he has been doing in our lives. And so we ask that your spirit would clear our minds from our anxious thoughts, from the to-do list that we have for after church, um, from the um, challenging moments of the past week, and help us in this time to focus on God and how great our God is. Holy Spirit, we ask you to soften our hearts and to mold us more into the likeness of Jesus Christ as we worship and soak in the truth of God's word today. We ask these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, I would like to talk to you just a little bit about the next song. It is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. I actually had a few people come up to me and ask me, why is there so many versions of Amazing Grace? And there's no wrong version of it, there's no right version of it, but this one, I'd like for you guys to stand and sing with us while, um, while we do this, but this one, my chains um, have been broken, my chains are gone, just means that the grace that we've received from Jesus, the forgiveness of our sins, the fact that if we pray, our sins are separated from us as far as from the east and to the west and into the deepest parts of the ocean means that we are set free. And that what does that mean? It, it means that there's no reason why we can't serve God and come to him because we don't have to be ashamed of the things that we might have done that didn't please him because of his grace. We have got that ability to just live our lives in freedom. And that's what this song, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, is all about. So if you guys would sing, stand and sing with us.
You guys sounded so good. To experience God's amazing grace in its fullness begins by us fully opening our hearts up to God and allowing God to rejoice in the ways in which we serve him and allowing God to talk to us and cleanse us from the ways in which we have fallen short, from the times in which we have sinned. And so this morning, as we seek to experience God's amazing grace and to be renewed by the power of his Holy Spirit, I invite you to join in our unison prayer of confession. O oh God, who on the first day made light and whose spirit fills the world, allow us to receive your light so that we can see our sinfulness with clarity. Shine your divine light on our neglects, offenses, abuses, and all manner of darkness that has displaced your grace in our hearts. Let us rejoice in what you find delightful and hate what you hate and help us to follow your ways all the days of our lives. Amen. As we come into the time of pastoral prayer today, I'm going to ask, are there any things that you are thankful for this week? Any places in which you have seen God at work this week? Yes, Ashley. Awesome. So as many of you know, Ashley is now teaching at Overhills High School, and um, she teaches in the agriculture program there. And so she is thankful this week, you know, she kind of inherited a classroom that just wasn't real conducive for hands-on learning kinds of experiences. And so um, finally this week she was able to get those uh, bolted desks unbolted and is um, able to begin to set up that room in a way that is going to allow her to minister to her, uh, to her students and have them grow in, in school. So yes, Karen. Yes. Yeah, yesterday was a real blessing, and uh, we mentioned earlier we were so thankful to see Jean and um, and to have Ted here, and um, and we had some neighbors that um, that weren't familiar with our church that that you know came on in and over and just had a a really really um, great uh, great experience here at the church, which is really what Fall Festival is all about. So, yes, Jackie. Oh, yes. So, uh, Pastor Todd's wife, Kelly, and the kids came, and they tried to hide from Todd as much as possible so we wouldn't connect the dots, but, uh, but we eventually caught up and connected the dots. So, we were, it was wonderful to, uh, to have them join us and, and be here, so uh, it was a great time, yeah. Any other praises? Mark, yeah. Well, as you all know, I had the honor of escorting Sam Eldon, if you all didn't know, his, his real name is Eldon. Sam is a nickname. But anyway, um, I was on a, a program called The Honor Flight, and Wednesday morning we flew to Washington, D.C. They got to tour the monuments. They got to see um, Arlington Cemetery, the changing of the guards, and it was just a very humbling and honorable experience for me. When we came back to Greensboro in the evening, if there was one person at the airport, there was a 1,000 to 1,500 people at that airport welcoming those heroes back from Washington, D.C. It was absolutely amazing. And I want to thank Mount Pisgah Church family for helping me make that possible for Sam. It was a... Uh 
It was a uh, blessed event. Hold on just a second. So for those of you that may not know, um, Sam uh, was, I think, the second or third oldest uh, veteran there. And Sam has the distinction of being the only veteran at this particular ga gathering who served in World War II, co the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. Sam, you wanted to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to personally thank everybody at Mount Pisgah. And I want to say I also had the pleasure of being asked by a gentleman from Lexington, North Carolina, to ask me to be Grand Marshal of their Veterans Parade next year. Oh, yeah, so he is going to get to be Grand Marshal of a parade. Keep eating your veggies, Sam. Yeah, when you come to church dinner, eat, eat the veggies, okay? Follow me, eat the veggies. Yeah, yeah, you'll be here. Yep, yep. That's a wonderful, wonderful um, opportunity. It's so. made my day. Good, good. Yeah, uh, God was wonderful things. Go ahead, Jim. Um, I just want to let everyone know uh, and that I am really thankful for my wife and partner, Doris, helping me with my mom. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't do it without her. Yeah, yeah. Doris is a... Uh, uh, a gift from God. She helps in many, many ways. Jim's thankful for Dave for all that she does to help care for his his mother. Um, Glendetta's thankful today because Doris took over doing funnel cakes yesterday <laughs> at the uh, <laughs> fall festival so that Dor Dor Glendetta can move on and be our uh, hayride driver. So uh, Doris, uh, we are very, very thankful uh, for you. So Prayer requests, um, people that we need to keep in prayer. Are there any uh, special prayer requests this morning? Yes, Rodney. Rodney works with the fire department, and he's just commenting on the need to pray um, for both our emergency workers who are responding to a lot of overdose calls with a lot of very, very young people. And, um, and also just to pray for the whole opioid um, epidemic that, that we have in our community and across our country at this point in time. So uh, we want to pray for all of those that are trying to respond. And I will say, as someone who has been trying to get someone the mental health services they need, there are very limited resources um, for addiction kind of services, mental health kinds of services. And so we want to pray for all of those who find themselves in, in with that struggle in that situation. So. Um, I also want to use that as an opportunity to invite all of you to pray and prepare. Um, the deacons are going to be hosting on Veterans Day Sunday, which is what, the 13th? 13th. 13th of November. We are going to have a, a Veteran and First Responders Appreciation Sunday. We do this, um, we've done this quite a bit pre-COVID, and now we get to resume doing it post-COVID. And so if you know of someone who is a first responder, emergency room personnel, um, you know, paramedic, um, firefighter, ambulance, EMS, please invite them to join us for worship that Sunday. Um, we will be recognizing them, praying um, for them, and then we will have a covered dish um, dinner afterwards because we're Baptist and we love to eat with new folks, okay? So, um, yeah, yeah, so. Any other prayer requests? Yeah, Sam. Uh, yeah, well, today is my youngest son's 69th birthday and I'd like God to bless him. Okay, and what's your son's name? Daryl. Daryl, uh, Sam's youngest son, is turning 69 today. So we wish him a happy birthday. And yes, go ahead, Matt. I'll say the families uh, associated with the victims of the shooting in Raleigh uh, last week. Uh, very tragic situation. 
Yes, yes. We want to pray for um, for the uh, fa all the families affected by the shooting in Raleigh um, this this past weekend, and we want to lift them up in our prayers as well. Paula. Yes. Remember, I had a phone call before I went to come to church this morning. Um, they called the family in for my aunt by marriage. My brother-in-law called me and said that her husband had called him and said that if anybody wanted to see her before she was gone, they needed to come. What's her name? Her name is Marjorie McKay, and also her name is her husband, okay. William. Okay. We're asked to pray for um, Margie and William McKay. They are um, an aunt and uncle of Camelia. Um, Margie is um, is um, going to most likely go home and meet Jesus sometime later today in person. So we want to keep um, their family in our prayers. Go ahead, Peggy. I just want to take forward my special friend in prayer. Okay. Peggy has some special friends. I could start rumors, Peggy, but we want to we want to keep those. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting to be like Scott up here. Yeah, you want to? No, no, no. no. Uh, Peggy has two friends she wants us to pray for that just want their names to be kept anonymous. I'll, I'll redeem that one. Okay, so yeah. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of laughter. Um, we thank you for uh, people that we can laugh with and for the relationships you have blessed us with. We are, we are thankful for the many, many ways in which we see you at work um, in our community and for the ways in which you are teaching us as a church family to, to reach out and embrace the community and um, share the love of Jesus um, with our neighbors. Lord, um, we ask that you would surround those that we love, those that we name today, who are in need of experiencing your healing touch. Lord, where there is grief, we ask that your Holy Spirit would bring comfort. Where there is anxiety and concern, we ask that your Holy Spirit would bring peace. Where there is pain and distress, we pray that your Holy Spirit would bring healing and relief. Lord, we ask that you would guide each of us um, as we leave this place today, open our eyes and open our hearts and open our ears so that we can hear your voice speaking to us and give us the boldness we need to follow your direction in ministering to others. It is our desire to be more and more like your son, Jesus Christ. And as an expression of our commitment to that desire, we pray together now the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Boo, Jim, I just come up with an idea. Make sure you ask me after church. Did you hear me? I yes, just, I, I did. Did you? Yeah. Make sure you see me after church. I just had one of those. <gasps> wasn't a senior moment. It was an aha moment. <laughs> the aha moments are becoming fewer and farther between. Yeah, but let's stick with that. <laughs> hey, yesterday was fan. Fantastic. It was fantastic. You know what it said? We're open for business. Janice don't like to have her name mentioned, but you did a good job organizing that one. And I appreciate it. And you need to know that. I thought about you all morning driving in this, this morning. Just what you do for this church. And the humbleness with which you do it. But the wisdom in which you put that plan together. Not just orchestrating the plan, but the wisdom with which you put it together. Incredible. Thank you. You can hit me later. I'll let you. Okay. <laughs> But this morning, I want you to uh, join me as we read our scripture. It comes from Matthew, the 26th chapter, verses 36 through 46. Then Jesus went with them to the garden called Gethsemane, and he told his disciples, Stay here a while. I go over there and pray. And taking Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he plunged into an agonizing sorrow. Then he said, this sorrow is crushing my life out. Stay here and keep vigil with me. And going a little ahead, he fell on his face, praying, Father, if there is any way, get me out of this, but please, not what I want. You, what do you want? Then he came back to his disciples. He found them sound asleep. He said to Peter, can't you stick it out with me a single hour? Stay alert, be in prayer so that you don't wander into temptation without even knowing you're in danger. There is a part of you that is eager, ready for anything in God. But there's another part that's as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. He then left them a second time. Again, he prayed, My father, if there is no other way than this, drinking this cup to the dregs, I'm ready. Do it your way. And then he came back. He again found them sound asleep. They simply couldn't keep their eyes open. This time he let them sleep on. And he went back a third time to pray, going over the same ground one last time. When he came back the next time, he said, Are you going to sleep on and make a night of it? My time is up. 
the Son of Man is about to be handed over to the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's get going. My betrayer is here. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. No time for peace this morning. It's been a great morning. But I want to ask you a sincere question. Do you feel comfortable questioning God? Do you feel comfortable doing it? A lot of people don't. I've got a really good friend from my days back in Columbus County. Um, he has cancer right now. Prognosis is good. I think he's going to be fine. He is 67, 68 years old is the is the definition of fitness. I mean, strong, muscular, vibrant, healthy, and all of a sudden gets a diagnosis of cancer. I know him. I'm not going to say his name because we're on Facebook, but he's not going to question God. He's going to trust God. He's going to know God is faithful and God is always present and right there beside him, but he's not going to question God. And he and I have had many, many discussions about this. There are points in the Bible where you see people questioning and you see different responses from God. My favorite is Job. What an incredible, incredible story as you listen to it in Job's Why Me? And we read God's response to him out of a whirlwind, whirlwind and we Read it as an admonishment. But it is a great discussion. And the funny thing about the book of Job is it poses a question to this day that has never been answered. In all of Scripture, it's a question that's not answered. The question of why is there human suffering? It's a good question. It's a question that people who are anti-God ask and throw back in our faces at every moment. <laughs> if God is good, why is there human suffering? Why, why would a God that is good allow human suffering? It's a good question. It's an honest question. And we go through struggles in our lives and there are times when we feel deep pain. I mean, when, when we are teenagers, holy cow, the things that we feel and know and the things that we feel so deeply and we're all the time questioning you know, to liven up the moment here, you know that first time when you get crushed by that first crush and you're, oh God, and it hurts. And I don't make fun of it. We kind of make fun of it now that we're older because we understand. But when we are that age and the limit on our understanding fullness, we, we are, that's why they call them crushes. And it hurts. And if we're brought up as people of faith, we ask why. We have loss. We ask why. We serve for financial struggles and we ask why. We get into arguments with people and we ask why. We have all kinds of things happen in our lives and we ask the question why. But some of us don't question God directly. We'll say why. 
Or we'll even say, why me, God? But we're really not questioning God. And so today, as we read this scripture, it's not as much about the details that are in here and the story. It's about these three times when Jesus questions God. Why why do I have to go through this? Why is this happening? Why do I have to bear this pain, this struggle? Now some people would try to make the argument, well, look what happened. He questioned God and he still died. And so, but that's not punishment for him, is it? It's not punishment for Jesus. Nothing happened to Jesus because he asked the question. Wasn't it even in the Gospels that I think Jesus said, ask, seek, knock, and the answer will be given to you. Maybe that would have been a better scripture to read today. But I want you to see, Jesus asks a question of God. He questions God. Why does this have to happen? Great question. The reality of it is, is that questioning God is not a sin. I don't see it anywhere in the Bible that it says don't question God. I think some people and some of the writers interpret that. Yeah, you shouldn't question God and they write that down. But Jesus Christ himself, where we begin to understand scripture as a whole, that message of Jesus Christ, Jesus says, ask, seek, and knock. And if you're hurting, ask God. If you have a question, ask God. If you are confused about something, ask God. Because in any way, if we don't do that, we have no way of learning about God, who God is, what God's ways are. Because the difference in our understanding as Christians of God is that the Lord of the universe doesn't want to hold this information, this knowledge that he has. He wants to give it to us. He offers it to us. God says, here, I share this with you. But he tells us, Jesus Christ tells us in all wisdom how we are supposed to do it. And I don't have to read that verse to you. But how does it begin? Ask, seek, not. It says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first. Seek first that kingdom. You're going to get answers. And people say, well, sometimes the answer is no. Well, no, we, we get answers. It's not a yes, no question. We get the answers. Sometimes we just don't get the answer that we like or the answer that we sometimes don't understand. Sometimes when we get that answer we don't like, what do we do? We just keep asking the question again. It's kind of the definition of insanity. (laughs) Asking the same question over and over again, hoping for a different result, you don't get the same different result sometimes. God tells you, you know, why? Why did I have that traffic accident? I, you know, I asked myself that one time. I was, <coughs> I was going to college, and I just—it was a fluke, and it was an accident. Behind a big truck, as I'm pulling into the intersection, light turns yellow. Just happens that the other driver was just wanting to get out quick. So as soon as that light hit green. Boom, and I was still in the section, and they hit me. And there I was, 
damaged their car, damaged my car. And I'm asking myself why. Seems kind of trivial, I know, but I made a mistake. Occasionally, sometimes, sometimes stuff happens. That's the reality of life. Didn't like it, wanted there to be a reason that I sinned or somebody else sinned or I did something wrong, but that wasn't why. It was just a mistake. Those things happened. Nothing I did against God, nothing I did to God, nothing I did to anybody else. It just happened. I didn't like the answer. That was the answer. But we've got to be willing to take the answers that we are given for what they are and work through them and take them and move on with them and learn from them. Because the more we do, the more we understand about the kingdom of God and the more we understand about God. But the first step is, is we've got to be willing to ask those questions. And it's okay to ask those questions. It's okay to ask hard questions. It's okay to ask angry questions. It's okay to blame. It's okay to scream out. You know why? God's got big shoulders. It's a job. God can handle it. It's what God does for us. He takes everything we give to Him. He take, God takes everything we give. And He will turn it to something good and teaching and knowledgeable to help us grow. And as we grow, the kingdom of God grows. And we make life better for ourselves and those around us as we learn these things because God does not have the desire to keep all of this to God's self. God does not want to make us into little toys that move and are manipulated at the very whim of God's desire. God created us for something great and knows that we as human beings that He created curious and we ask those questions and you know sometimes we ask why me or why my friend or why my children or why my daughter we ask those questions sometimes we ask questions and go why did you do that God and God will answer and God will take that and carry that burden for you. That's what God does. Just like that night, Jesus stood in that garden, knelt in that garden, fell to his face in that garden, cried, suffered in anguish, wondering why me, and begged God, let this go. And he listened to the answer. And in that horrific event, something good came out of it. Something good for the kingdom of God. We really still don't know why. But we know that God did something good. Even when questioned by God's son. Praise God that God is the God who answers our questions. Praise God that God hears our prayers. Praise God that our prayers are answered. But most importantly, in our tri trivial situations, in our pain, in our depth of despair, in our questioning, in everything in our life, God reaches with open arms and welcomes us to 
to his breast and says, what do you have today, my child? Regardless, I love you. Amen? Amen. In that moment, we celebrate. Because we know at the end of all of this, and when that day comes, we will... Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> That's your clue. Are you, are you herding cats? I'm herding cats. But in the end, we all know what the answer is, what the ultimate answer is. And so this morning, as we celebrate this God that welcomes our questions and concerns and gives us answers and gives us love beyond compare, we know that one day we will be in paradise. Let's stand and sing, I'll fly away. Join me as we pray our benediction and give thanks for our new praise team member today. 
I won't mention her name, but we're grateful she's Two here. Two of them. Let's, let's mention her. <laughs> Brianna, take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Amelia. <coughs> and they have only practiced like only 10 minutes before yeah. you see them say it. And they did so great. And we're so appreciative. <laughs> Thank you.